Orbsolute Radiance is a modded boss of any radiance that is impossible. Created by Early Hemisphere, Orbsolute Radiance, version any radiance, has one attack. The Orb Barrage. But instead of spawning one orb per wave, it spawns every single possible orb. Given to me as a challenge, Early wanted to see how far it could make it into the boss. So, for the last few days, I've been trying to see how far I can make it. This is a commentary explaining how I got as far as I did, and why I can't go further. The final set of charms used were Strength, Legacy Quick Slash, Stalwart Shell, Heart, and Shade Dash. This build is entirely based on survival. I start off the fight with a charged Great Slash. This is because the hitbox of the Great Slash lingers, and by the time Orbsu Raiden spawns, it hits her. Right as it does, I'm able to hit her with another Nail Slash as if I hadn't made a swing at all. I am not able to stay on her face for a face dance for long. I only get a few hits in before... Yeah. The orb barrage in the first phase cannot spawn in the center of Radiance's face or above this line on the screen. This is because these are not valid locations for orbs to spawn in. Despite this, a normal shade dash cannot get over the orbs as it is too slow and too weak. So we use sharp shadow to go around the orbs. Sharp shadow increases the distance of our shade dash and this extra distance allows us to clear the orb's spawn radius regardless of her position. Following this, we then attempt Descending Dark, which we successfully perform. This is a very difficult maneuver given that Radiance is in the middle of the screen. During this fight, it is much preferred to have Radiance in some sort of position that is either slightly more to the left or right of the center. This gives us extra space to go over and around Radiance before we use the Descending Dark. We want to spend as much time as possible in the air away from the orbs, as this lets more orb waves get baited around us so that once we descending dark, we can then use a recharged shade dash to be able to dodge the rest of the orbs. However, when she is located in the middle of the arena, this minimizes the possible space, making it very difficult to be able to dodge the orbs. Here, we successfully descending dark, but failed to activate shade dash in time, getting hit. Radiance then unluckily teleports to the other side of the screen. Had she teleported to the left side, we could have been able to pogo her until the next wave spawned. Instead, we dash to the other side of the arena and then pogo the void to C dash on the wall. We fully charge C dash and release it as soon as possible so we end up off screen. This is why the screen goes black. This is called a Beyond Void Dash, or BV Dash and will be explained in more detail in the future. But for now, after a certain distance, we cancel our C-dash and begin to fall off the map. We fall for a very long time, until the game checks for our position at a certain point, and teleports us back to the arena with iframes. The BV-dash is very useful when Radiance teleports to the opposite side of the screen in comparison to us. Upon respawning, we perform two successful orb dodges. In both, we pull good above Radiance, use Sharp Shadow to bait the orbs, descending Dark to use the iframes so the orbs can't hit us, before once again using Sharp Shadow to dash through the remaining orbs. However, the third attack we fail to dodge, despite movement being exactly the same. This is because not every orb barrage has the same set amount of waves. Orb Salute Radiance can spawn between 10 to 14 waves of orbs per attack, and the amount is randomly determined. How easy an attack is to dodge depends on how many waves she spawns, as well as how far she is from the center. Generally, 10 to 11 waves can always be dodged regardless of her position. 12 to 13 waves can only be dodged when she's located to the left or right side of the screen, and 14 waves is usually undodgeable regardless of her position. 
If we slow down the footage and count, we can clearly see that in this case, she spawned 13 waves of orbs. So this was dodgeable, but we needed to bait the orbs for much longer than we did in order to do so. The next attack has far fewer waves. Combine this with the fact that she was in one of the farthest left positions she can spawn in, and we don't even need to use Shade Dash to dodge the oncoming orbs. Following this, the spiked floor phase starts. Now, generally you want to descend in dark as close to the floor as possible. The spikes, however, make it more likely to get hit since you're descending dark much higher than previously. A good pattern would have Radiance alternating back and forth over the spikes, so you can maximize your descending dark height. However, despite this, we don't take a single hit at all. This is due to the flawless RNG and movement that allowed us to make it through without taking a hit. With the fully spiked floor, we no longer have the lenience we once had to bait the orbs, so getting 12 waves or less is generally what we need in this phase. However, when the phase started, she was nearly directly in the middle of the arena. With no extra room to bait, I was forced to fall into the void rather than take a hit by the orbs. I respawned at a bad time, however as slow movement and loss of iframes made me get hit by the next wave of orbs. The next orb barrage is performed well, but once again, she teleports to the opposite side of the screen from us, so we are once again forced into doing a cloud pogo and BV dash to dodge the orbs. We however do not spawn at a favorable time, but in the middle of an attack. Our iframes run out before it finishes, so I attempt to bait the orbs prematurely by pogoing on Radiance and letting the orbs go around me. Sadly though, she spawned too many waves of orbs and still hit me off screen. Luckily, the sword rain phase starts almost immediately after, however, using Descending Dark this early was dangerous. Had she done a barrage of more than 11 waves, we would have taken the hit and lost the fight. Lucky for us, she did not spawn too many, so we were able to bait the orbs and make it into the Sword Rain phase. Being the exact same as the regular any rating Sword Rain, we make it past the phase with ease, successfully making it through the first phase and concluding our attempt. Sadly, this is the end of our journey, as the platform phase is not even remotely possible for a human to perform. This is mainly due to how large the spawn radius of the orb barrage is in the platform phase. The line that the orbs cannot spawn above is located here, so all of the upper teleports are hypothetically escapable. However, they are all separated from each other by large distances, which would require Sharp Shadow to reach. So, it's seemingly best to camp out the upper middle platform since there are three reachable positions compared to two in the others, as none of the other positions can be reached without Sharp Shadow from this spot. Every other position, the orbs completely surround the Radiance, making it impossible to hear in any of these positions and escape in time. Though, the orb barrages on the side are cropped since the edge of the screen is also an invalid spawn location. This doesn't help us though. We could hypothetically use the thick platform on the left to see stall to block the oncoming corpse from a distance, but we can never get away from her in time when she's on the left side to dodge these attacks. A successful dodge I did discover is when she's located in the upper middle platform. It takes advantage of the same strategy used in the first phase, while going above her to bait the orbs and descending darking into one of the left platforms. Another dodge that can be used is when I am located in the upper middle platform and the radiance is located to the left of me. When she starts the attack, I can descending dark to the lower right platform, 
before while jumping off the upper right platform and making my way back to the upper middle platform. But regardless of that, the fact that she can only be hit in one position and no proper consistent flow can be established makes this phase humanly impossible. But if that didn't sell you enough, the climb phase is still the any radiance climb. So without Balder, this phase becomes even more hellish than it already is. Thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this explanation of the strategy used to beat phase 1 of Absolute Radiance version Any Radiance. I wanted to try to make a video like this as a way to practice for the Any Radiance 2.0 documentary. Rest assured, progress is being actively made on it, and do subscribe so you can hear updates on how production is going. Hope you stick around for it. See ya!